21% increase annually. Like that percentage of the population grows. It's, all, it's a really easy sport to play. Um, it's a really easy sport to play. Um, all you need is yourself and a ball, which makes it really accessible as a, as a fun athletic opportunity for anybody. Kind of like running where all you need is a pair of shoes in the space. With soccer, all you need is a ball. Um, I'm going to explain all the equipment you need if you want to play, whether by yourself or if you want to actually play on a team or competitively, which is also an opportunity. Um, where it can be played? It can be played on the streets. You can, I mean, there's youth leagues where you can play on grass fields. You can even play in your own backyard. All you need is yourself and the ball. Um, some of the basics. Um, it's all played on the ground. You only use your feet and everything else with like say, like from your shoulder to your fingertips, unless you're playing a goalie. A goalie is someone like defends the goal. The, uh, the purpose of soccer is to try to score on a goal. It's your team versus the other team, or yourself versus the wall. The wall could be your goal, a trash can. You could actually have like a net and a metal frame. Many different options, very easy to do. Um, some of the things you need, you can use, you can use any pair of shoes you want. Um, if you want to play on grass, traditionally you want to use like a firm ground, which firm ground is for like harder ground, like say if it's dry outside. These have a much shorter cleat. Um, also, if it's like more wet or muddy outside, you can also use a, a soft ground, which is it's the same design as shoe. There's just less studs and they're longer, so you can better traction on the ground and you're more stable, so you're not left, you're not likely to like slip and bust your face in the when it's wet outside. Um, Something else you'll need, well, pretty obviously, shin guards. Um, those will protect yourself because not everybody is that particularly coordinated. And so there's the opportunity for a lot of ankle shin injuries. The ones I usually wear actually aren't that big. A lot of professional soccer players don't wear, wear very big ones just because you want light. But you also have different types. So you got the small one right here. Some of them strap, some of them don't. One was, these are some of the smaller ones with straps. They usually use soccer or more inexperienced players will wear like the big shin guard, which not only covers your shin, but also has like an ankle and a, and a strap. That's just overall protection to keep your lower, the lower part of your leg safe. So those are, those things are kind of important for like walking and moving about and things like that. Um, also important is a soccer ball. Um, there are lots of different sizes of soccer balls. The standard size is considered a size five, which is about 28 inches, which is about yay big. Unfortunately, I didn't bring mine because mine had a huge hole in it, and it doesn't really do a lot of good like this. Um, but depending on your age and how your experience level depends on what size ball you use. Um, there's also a size four, which is about 26 inches. That's usually between like players ages like eight to 12. A little smaller ball, a little bit easier to handle for smaller feet. Um, you got the size three, which is for players under eight, which is about which is about two feet in depth, two feet circumference. I mean, that's for an even smaller player because I mean, the big ball looks like for them it'd be like us picking around a beach ball. It'd be kind of difficult. Um, they have a lot smaller sizes for promotional use and things like that. The ones, on, the two balls I have right here. This is a very traditional uh, twenty-eight panel. Um, this one's probably made out of leather or PVC. Um, the one right here is the one they used in the World Cup last year. Um, it's called the Jabalani, and it actually only has 11 panels. It's considered, it's able to be more round and fearful, and so it flies better. Because with this, there's a lot more edges and crevices and things like that, so it doesn't have as smooth a surface, so it's not an actual, it's not necessarily like a complete sphere. This, with the technology they've used, has made it almost completely round. Um, how to wear all this stuff, because it's important to know how to do it. First, you want to make sure that you have long socks to be able to cover your shin guards so they don't fall off or get caught on somebody like he is. Um, make sure that you put your shin guards completely under them just to be safe. And then when you put on your cleats, make sure you put them on and you tie them really tight. You don't want them loose. You don't want, you don't want them falling out of them. Something I forgot to mention is for goalies, they do some. They have 
they wear gloves, usually about a latex palm, something like that. I have like over five experience with this. Um, ball hurts. Leather, PVC, synthetic materials, they hurt your hand. And so you usually wear oversized gloves. These are actually almost a half inch longer than my fingers. They've got, it's a sort of almost like a sticky grip to them. Um, some of the optional equipment, like this goalie right here, his name is Petr Cech, he's a fairly famous one in Europe. He's actually wearing headgear because he had a concussion. That's, that's one of the risk factors for playing soccer, it's sort of dangerous. Um, so he had an injury and he decided to wear that. You don't have to wear that, it's extra equipment. Um, overall, soccer is a very easy sport to do. All you need is yourself and just a little bit of, I mean, just a little bit of space, not a whole lot of space. Um, if you want to play soccer, you have the ability to too.